Thanks, Harry, for your insight into what is glass, how it's processed, and how to use it on projects. Now that we've explored glass, let's have a look at the concept of is glass, if glass acts as the skin, what are the bones? Traditional glazing uses aluminium frames for probably 95% of the facades. Yeah. Window walls and curtain walls are the two major facade systems that are used on buildings these days in modern times. We'll explore that in detail in the following video. Before we go to there, let's have a look at different types of framing systems. Facade framing can offer support to glazing in several different architectural ways. Centre pocketed glazing systems, similar to the Ibis Hotel, can be used to give that uh, perception of depth to the frame, a bit of a shadow. Yeah. Captive glazing is typically glazed with the glass on the front of the frame. There are some benefits to that, which we'll discuss further on in these lecture series. And structural silicon glazed options for facades give the architect the perception of having a single sheet of glass monolithically moulded around the outside of the building with no interruptions. So sort of very flush looking. Correct. Facade. Some advanced facade systems that we can explore to provide transparent looking facades. If aluminium framing is the bones, this is the Usain Bolt of skeleton systems. We're talking about striking facades in this type of framing system. Steel can be used. Steel has the stiffness about three times of the equivalent aluminium section. Very strong. Well, the strength is similar, but it's the stiffness, how much it deflects. Yeah. So steel can deflect about one third the deflection amount of a similar aluminium framing system. So steel can be used to give you larger spans in the glazing without experiencing excessive deflections. To become even more transparent, Stainless steel cables are used in a wide range of facades. These stainless steel cables are very thin, almost invisible. But because they're a cable, they have to be designed specially to be an attention-only mechanism. Cable net facades are the ideal example of that, almost like a spider web supporting the glass. And then for intricate freeform shapes, grid shell structures are becoming very popular these days as well. We'll now look at some all glass structure methods. Of my interest in. It's lacked all that beauty in the aluminium, so cold and transparent in glass. We can achieve some amazing structures which are all glass. Some examples are frameless glass supported shop fronts where the glass just free spans from the top to the bottom of the structure. For even larger spans, glass fins are used in lieu of aluminium or steel framing to support the edges of the glass. This can be used in uh, innovative ways. So the glass is used as the beams on the roof and the columns on the wall. And then face glass is laid over the top to act as the skin. Like the Apple store in Sydney. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Apple stores in general are an amazing feat of engineering, the way that they use all glass structures. Finally convinced you. <laughs> You've uh, PK'd my engineering interest there. This is a slide that I was fortunate to acquire from a friend, Mick Patterson. It goes into detail about the different types of large spanning facade systems and also looks at the cost, maintenance, deflection, design flexibility and how each one of those different types of advanced systems becomes typically more expensive, more time consuming as we get more and more transparent, except for design and flexibility and the maintenance. They're the two considerations in large spanning advanced facade systems that typically become easier once you get more transparent. What is a, ma a mast truss facade? Yeah, good question, Gary. <laughs> I haven't shown a detail in the slides, but a mast truss system is one that uses a steel column and then uses tension outriggers and braces to create, similar to a mast structure of a ship, where there's a major column, some outriggers that then put tensile 
uh, cables into effect to be able to support the glass. Very interesting. If uh, your students are interested in any further details on these advanced systems, structural glass facades and enclosures by Mick Patterson is a fantastic reference for you to explore further. Now that we've looked at the skeletons that hold up these advanced structures, the Usain Bolt skeletons, here's the way that the glass is attached to these amazing transparent looking facades. Some methods of doing it are the bolted or point fixed system is probably the most traditional mean. Yes. There's some great advancements these days that are transpiring. Dow Corning have a structural silicon that when autoclave to the glass finishes completely clear and has 10 times the strength of normal structural silicon. So that's making it possible to actually adhere fixings onto the glass these days. There are other systems such as clamp systems which don't require holes in glass either. And companies such as Sealy Sadak in Germany have made amazing advancements in the ability to create point fittings or attachments that are embedded into the glass, or actually laminated into the glass. They uh, make the glass basically like an IKEA set. You can go and purchase it and screw them together. Did they use special interlays to bond that glass together? Typically they use SGP interlays which provide higher structural performance and greater adhesion for these fittings which are built into the glass themselves. Is it true that, that uh, metal bonds better to, to the SG layer than glass? Not necessarily, no. Glass has fantastic adhesion to interlayers. Some metals, uh, aluminium for example, still has very good adhesion. Stainless steel does have some issues. It must be cleaned extremely well using ultrasonic cleaning in order to remove the machining oils on the stainless steel surface to create that adhesion. Very good point. Yeah. At the next lecture we're going to look at Gary. We'll be looking at a detailed look at what is a curtain wall versus a window wall.